We'll hear from the ranking member of the subcommittee, our Republican whip, uh, for his opening statement. Mr. Thu. Thank you, Chairman Lujan, for holding what I think is a very timely hearing. Um, in 22 legislative calendar days, the FCC's authority to conduct spectrum auction expires. And yet the last time this committee held any hearings related to spectrum management was in July 2020 when I was serving as the chairman of the subcommittee. So while I have been disappointed in the lack of progress on this issue, I hope moving forward we can work collaboratively. We all know that Spectrum is the lifeblood of wireless communication. Many people can expect to receive a one-time stimulus relief payment, everybody. Up to $1,000 in crisis relief money is currently available to be claimed right now, and so, and so some of you may have to take action before you can receive this extra cash. Now, with inflation eating into U.S. spending, more state officials and lawmakers are looking for ways to get money into the hands of residents. More than a dozen states are set to distribute money to residents with many short-up household finances. Caregivers in New Jersey will soon receive payments of $1,000 as a result of a program intended to help those whose wages have been impacted by the crisis. According to a new press release, recipients will receive a one-time $1,000 payment and relief funds for their hardships stemming from the crisis. The commissioner, Ed McDonald, told reporters, the crisis has had a severe impact on all of our lives in most industries throughout the United States. One of the hardest hit fields was caregiving as staff were on the front lines for keeping clients and loved ones safe seven days a week. Our hope is that these funds provide some relief and support for those working incredibly important and difficult jobs. According to a Camden County Board of Commissioner, the grants are part of the more than $60 million in federal funds the Board of Commissioners made available to different hard hit sectors of the community, including rental assistance and grants for nonprofit organizations and small businesses. Millions qualified in Georgia will also see $350 direct payments in just a week. According to the governor, the checks will be mailed out to people in Georgia who benefit from Medicaid, subsidized child health insurance, and food stamps, or cash welfare assistance. The White House sent about a billion dollars to the state during the crisis as part of the American Rescue Plan, and the cash is still being used to fund the relief program. If you're eligible, the state is urging you to update your personal details ahead of the payout. According to Katie Bird, a spokesperson for the governor's office, payments will be deposited automatically from September. Delaware is also providing $300 per adult resident. The 2022 Delaware Relief Rebate Program was just created by the House Bill 360. The legislation called and relief rebates, which is a one-time direct payment of $300 per adult to Delaware residents. The relief is intended to help people in Delaware facing higher prices at the grocery store and gas pump. The Delaware Department of Finance has already issued one-time payments of $300 to individuals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, recognize uh, Senator Fisher. Uh, Senator Fisher, recognize for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate our witnesses being here today to discuss critical consideration for managing America's airwaves. Ms. Baker, I want to talk a little bit about the value of authorizing the FCC to continue holding the public spectrum auctions. You addressed that a little bit um, in, in uh, Senator Thune's questions when you spoke about the FCC and the issues um, what happens there with certainty, et cetera, if uh, that deadline is not met and it's not reauthorized. But can you speak specifically to American taxpayers? How would they be negatively affected if we don't reauthorize the FCC's spectrum authority? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. No, just to get past all the technical stuff and let people know why this is important. Um, uh, we're still in the middle of the race to 5G at this point, and other countries have twice as much mid-band spectrum, which is where 5G is being built out across the globe. Um, we simply need more to continue to increase our speeds and to continue to lead the world in innovation. If the FCC can't hold auctions, then we will not have any more spectrum, and we will be um, uh, we will fall far behind and we will lose our global leadership. So it, it will mean quite a lot. In 4G with our leadership, that's why all of the innovative companies are here in the United States. It's why Uber and all of the Airbnbs, they're all here. And that's because we led the world in 4G. We need to do the same in 5G and we need to continue to authorize Spectrum and therefore they have to have the authority. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bana, 
looking at the overall spectrum management process, it's vital that all stakeholders feel fairly represented. Recent spectrum fights have shown a lack of trust in the IRAC process, motivating certain federal agencies to want in this package. Thank you in particular to two terrific champions, Chairwoman Eddie Bernice Johnson of the Science, Space and Technology Committee, Chairman Frank Pallone of the Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as other chairs who were involved in this legislation. And I want to also acknowledge the leadership of the ranking member, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas, it was a joy and inspiring to behold your very informative and impressive presentation in favor of this legislation. Great news, everybody. Monthly benefit checks are finally going to be increased, and the Social Security Administration has announced that millions of Social Security recipients may receive an extra $1,900 in relief money. Now, older Americans and others receiving Social Security could get a significant bump in their annual COLA next year, with experts forecasting that a typical recipient could receive an additional $1,900 in 2023 to keep up with inflation. And unfortunately, many seniors, which have struggled this year as their 2022 bump, which was 5.9%, lagged the highest inflation of 40 years. Now, consumer prices cooled in July as gas prices dropped, but inflation remained scorching hot up to 8.5% from a year ago. And the Social Security Administration bases its annual COLA adjustment on inflation data from July, August, and September. Now with the agency announcing its official hike this year, with data now available for one of those three months, seniors could see an average monthly increase of 9.6%, according to the Senior Citizens League. If inflation continues to ease, seniors could finally get a break in 2023 and close the benefits gap that many people are experiencing based on average monthly benefit of around $1,656 in 2022, a 9.6% boost would amount to a monthly gain of about $159 and an annual gain of $2,000. Now, Mary Johnson, one of the analysts at the Senior Citizens League, has told CBS News a high call will be eagerly anticipated to address an ongoing shortfall in benefits that Social Security beneficiaries are experiencing in 2022 as inflation runs higher than their 5.9% COLA. Mary Johnson said she expects the Social Security Administration to announce the COLA following the release of September inflation data. The, set, the SSA bases an annual benefits adjustment on a slightly different index. It is called the CPIW, which is a basket of goods and services that are typically bought by workers. And the Labor Department reported that the CPIW increased 9.1% in July. To be sure, there are still two months of data yet to go, and the Social Security COLA could end up being higher or lower depending on inflation's trajectory in August and September. Analysts have said they are estimating a COLA range from a low of 9.3% to a high of 10%, with 9.6% most likely given the most recent data. The average monthly benefit for the current year stands at about $1,600, but that is typically falling short by about $50 per month for a typical senior. They may be pushing more seniors to rely on the government assistance programs. In 2021, 